as one of my friends said, we're going overseas to Easter. We're going to French Island, which is in the middle of Western Port Bay. It's going to be pouring with rain both days, but we're only going for one night um, because we figured that's probably long enough. Um, it's actually quite big, though. For We're hiring a car. There's six of us going. And um, people going, well, why are you hiring a car? Well, it's bigger than Phillip Island. That's why we're hiring a car. It's uh, anyway, so I am making um, a slice to take with us. And it is the, I'll get this right, caramel almond cashew slice. It says postnatal after it. It is in Whole Food Child, which is a book on Cookie Doo, but you can just look for the slice name. And it is my favorite slice. One of the people we're going with is allergic to eggs, so I couldn't make a cake. So I thought I'd make this slice. I'm also using an old tin. Which is this sort of size, which I'm just going to line because it's pretty, pretty bloody underneath. But um, it fits in. I've got a Tupperware container that it fits in perfectly. So the, the slice when I take it out of the tin. So that's what I'm making in there. So that looks ready to go. And I had to make some almond butter, so I'll tell you a bit about that as well. All right, start cooking, grease and line your tin. It's no cooking, so there isn't actually, there's no oven on or anything else. 150 grams of almonds, activated or roasted, mine are raw. And 150 grams of cashews, activated or roasted, and mine are raw. I'm sure it'd be nice, but you know, needs must, gotta to go to work. Heading off first thing tomorrow morning, out for dinner tonight. <laughs> got to do what I can with what I've got. So that's my cashews and my almonds in there. So about 300 grams. 160 grams of pitted medial dates. Well, I've got a mixture. I had some medial and some just ordinary dried dates. That'll make it a bit caramelly though. That'd be delicious. Put my lid on. And I'm actually going to use this lid because that's the lid that I made the almond butter with so no need to dirty another lid three seconds speed six then it says 40 grams of dried cranberries well i have a bit of dilemma when it comes to cranberries i do have them i did use some in a cranberry chutney but they always come um even if they're organic they have, um, what do you call it, uh, an oil on them, like a vegetable oil. So um, my go-to is, my go-to is goji's. So I'm going to use goji berries in here. So just these little numbers, again, get these, fill up a container. Here we go. Nothing wrong with a few extra goji's. My, Olive oil. Oh, coconut oil, even. Just melted that. It's going in. 65 grams of almond butter. Now, I might do this a little bit longer, but that has been it's probably gone for about 15 minutes. Started off with a high blitz. I've got a customer who makes this all the time. I find that it can be a bit dry. Anyway, the bowl is still a bit warm because it does heat up in that time. But um, you do a minute on speed nine and then you turn it down like four or five minutes on speed four and then speed three after that and just keep going until it's the consistency that you like. So that's gone, I reckon, for about 15 minutes. But that'll do for this anyway. I might process it a bit more afterwards. So there it is. Uh, and I was looking. Um, you buy almond butter in the supermarket, it's, I think it was nine grams. Let me have a look. Sorry, it was nine dollars, because I wrote this down. Um, it's only between nine and thirteen dollars for 250 grams of almond butter. Okay, and 450 grams of almonds is seven dollars seventy. This is just from Woolworths. So um, my almond butter is costing me, so it's the same, the 250 grams that I can pay ready-made $9 to $13, I can make for about $4. So anyone who says you can't save with a Thermix, let me tell you, there's plenty of ways you can serve with it, save with a Thermix. In fact, I'm grouping them together and I'm going to create something to show you. 
Um, thermal mix do have um, cost savings, um, but they uh, but they usually cakes and things like that. I'm trying to find some healthier options. Anyway, let me just get on with this. 60 grams of honey. You might not like them. Um, 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 butter is honey. Honey is really delicious. I'm not a huge honey person, but oops, gone a bit over there. Never mind. So now sort that out in a minute. Mm -hmm. I don't have roasted waffle seed. We have some vanilla essence. And I've actually just bought some vanilla beans from New Jingni Naturals. Uh grams I think. Anyway they just arrived today so I'm going to make my own paste which will save a lot of money. But I'll put this in here. Obviously I can reuse this to put my own vanilla paste in. It's one of the ways another way you can save a heap of money making your own. One teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay, and some sea salt. So no, here we are. Half a teaspoon of salt. My lid back on. Forty seconds on reverse speed three. A little bit noisy because of the nuts in there, so a bit hard to talk. But it is delicious. Um, Going to put this into the tin. It goes into the fridge for a minimum of two hours. Probably be a bit under. And then I'm going to clean and dry my mixing bowl. Let me pour this in first. Right now, my my butter hasn't mixed in very well there, so I'm going to just move it around a little bit and then pop it on to smells so good I love this slice so good just want to make sure so the the almond butter is going to help stick it all together yeah yum 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 so I'm going to tip it into here Okay. Full of nutty goodness, and you know it's caramelly because of the the meat or dates, a bit of honey, and I'm actually just going to push it all down with my hand. Easy to make, no cooking, no baking, um, and then it gets topped with some chocolate. Now the thing I just want to say about the chocolate is. Whenever you're melting chocolate, you need to have a super dry bowl. One little grain of water in there, one little drop of water in there, I should say, and your your chocolate will just go hard and it's useless. So my tip for that is obviously wash and dry your bowl. Then sit it on your Thermomix turbo. Dry it again because you'll find there will have been um, a few drops of water around the blades uh, and that will flick them off. And so dry it and do it again. So turbo again. So I do two lots of turbo. Gives me a super dry bowl. I am guaranteed that my chocolate is going to be fine. You chop up the chocolate. Ten seconds speed eight. And then it melts for two minutes. 
40 degrees on speed one, and then you spread it on top of this because this will have hardened up a bit in the fridge. Look at that. Um, all right, now I've got a really messy pan. I've got to try and turn this off. So, sorry, mouse. Um, anyway, uh, I've, I will show you the, the finished results, um, but have a great Easter if I don't get onto this before. And I'm just going to stop the recording. Try and.